This is Nina Curley reporting for WAMDA. I'm here at KITCOM, Qatar's IT conference, with Ziad Sankari, who's, uh, we're here in the Stars of Science booth, and Ziad's going to talk about cardio diagnostics. Ziad, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Nina? Good. So tell me a bit about the product. Cardio Diagnostics produces a product that is called LifeSense. LifeSense is the first product of its kind in the world in the fact that it can provide patients with remote cardiac monitoring outside of the hospital for longer periods of time. The current technology that is available to patients does not allow long-term cardiac monitoring outside of the hospital. So the solution that we bring is based on years of R&D. We've done a lot of work in uh, optimizing the algorithm that can detect pathologies by analyzing the person's electrocardiogram or the uh, electrical activity of the heart. So basically we have a perfect product that can detect abnormalities and transmit it wirelessly through the GSM network to a dedicated monitoring center where professional medical experts are going to look at this data and respond to events. In case the event is a critical case, like a heart attack or something alarming that requires immediate attention, the crew or the professional staff is going to send the emergency crews immediately to the person's location. We have GPS-enabled device that can tell where the patient is, how his, his condition is, and what kind of problem he's having. So the GPS is included in, in the LifeSense monitor? That is true, and this allows us to reach to the patient on time and to know the perfect route to reach him and to take him to the closest hospital in order to save his life. Because as you might know, in critical cases such as heart attacks, time is very crucial. If you do not rush the patient to the hospital on time, that patient might die and lose his life. And how did you get inspired to develop this? My father himself is a victim of heart attacks. He passed away by a heart attack. Um, uh, and at that time, t 10 years ago, there weren't any technologies that would allow people, patients like my father to be monitored outside hospital. And uh, he was discharged uh, after having a heart attack. And usually there, are, there is a 30 days within which there is a recurrent risk of uh, that kind of attacks. Uh, there weren't technologies to monitor him outside the hospital, that's why he passed away silently. If there were, probably uh, help would have been able to reach him on time and uh, help him live a longer life. Sorry to hear that, Zia. That's a powerful inspiration. Yeah, it is indeed. I mean, that thing kept me focused on what I'm doing. I uh, spent many years doing R&D my, throughout my education, so it's probably uh, wor worth mentioning that I started the very first prototype at the last year of undergrad uh, back uh, in college seven years ago. And then later on, um, throughout my research in, in the U.S. with uh, top institutions like Cleveland Clinic, Ohio State Medical Centers, and others, uh, we were able to develop this even further. And we put the algorithm that we created through the research onto a hardware and a complete solution, complete IT and hardware solution through the Stars of Science uh, that is an initiative of Qatar Foundation. So is that how you got the support to develop the prototype? True. So uh, part of the research has been uh, done in the U.S. and uh, the uh, development part on the hardware and the solution has been uh, uh, part of the activities that Stars of, so Stars of Science uh, offered us. Uh, we got in-kind services and uh, funds to develop the whole solution and the whole uh, product. What were your biggest challenges developing it? Actually, the interesting thing is we were doing something for the first time. Uh, we were working on platforms that have not been optimized to do what we, we are doing, and we had to solve problems on our own. We used to go to the web, to, the web, to forums, to experts, and they all turned us down because they didn't have the right answers. We had to create our own solutions in many technical aspects. I don't want to go into the details, but just uh, to let you know, we were working on um, platforms that are not uh, widely used, uh, and these platforms are relevant to our product because they have optimal um, energy expenditure and they have optimal compatibility with our um, web solutions. So that, can, that, that was the most difficult uh, technical problem. On, on the business side, there were quite a few challenges that we needed to uh, work around. 
such as the kind of system that is available in, in, in the Gulf region, uh, where we had to do a lot of research and a lot of contacts to understand how we can make a, a successful uh, business model that can create revenues, as well as creating the contact uh, contacts within the, the region, uh, within the healthcare system in this region. And how do you plan to market it and generate revenue? Um, you're based in Qatar. Are you going to start aiming for a Qatari market or go global? We are hoping to start pilot studies in Qatar and in Lebanon as well in, in parallel. So the pilot studies are going to be um, where patients actually wear the device and we monitor them for a set period of time and we see how the, how the patients are responding or reacting with, the, with, with our solution, with our system, and what kind of changes that need if any, that need to be uh, uh, adjusted or added to the system. Uh, later on, we are expanding already. We started already expanding our network of uh, relationships within the hospitals in Saudi Arabia, in, uh, in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, in Qatar, and in Lebanon. And we're reaching out to some, um, uh, some people in the healthcare industry in Egypt as well. So that would form our base platform to, to grow uh, larger. It's important to mention as well that we are in contact with a few distributors, uh, medical distributors that have large share of the market, so they could be also our enablers. Excellent. Um, how did your mindset change since you decided to start your own business? Well, this is not actually the first business I started. Uh, back in the States, I was involved in, in a high-tech biomedical venture called OT Insights, which was... Um, targeting the wound care market. It was based on a proprietary patented technology uh, that can enable wound care patients get a better diagnostics and better treatment. Uh, that was uh, probably the first high-tech venture. I had a few trials before that. Uh, if you're asking when was I, when did I change an entrepreneur, uh, ch when did I become an entrepreneur, how did that change my life? I think it was back in the very early days. Uh, it probably flows in the blood. Uh, since probably high school, I've been trying to set up small projects, whether for charity or f uh, for profit, to uh, create something that can impact the society. And I think my vision about the world changed a lot since then, because I realized that uh, a person can do a lot to impact his community and his society, and can be ambitious enough to think about the whole world as a place to impact and not only the, clo the closer box or the smaller world that he lives in. What would you advise an entrepreneur who wants to start something that will make a big change in their society? I definitely tell them do not over plan, just think rationally, analyze and go for your target and go and do it with passion because if you're doing it for the money it's a problem, if you're doing it for the passion you're going to excel at it, and the, mon the money is going to come anyway if you're doing it with that kind of love and passion. Thanks, Ziad. Thank you very much.